Hi everyone, I'm Golden and I'll be reading some poems for you all and I just want to first start off and say thank you to the Tufts University Social Collective for putting this together um, and I'm just gonna get right into it. Thank you for tuning in. Family Portrait with Ancestors have you ever sliced through a watermelon wound and watched your family suck all the red out? Twin tends to the rind. Mom salivates salt and guards the seeds. Dad beats the bleeds out of our t-shirts. Cam brings pails of hot holly water to raw rinse the deck. We all knife our wound smile until summer gives us our childhood back. This is how we vacation. Backyard carcasses and lobotomies. It's all we have time for. Grief candies our hands when we try to clean God's cadavers alone. It's triggering. The way the fruit of all countries falls to the back of our throat and then fly up black and familiar. My family says they are shields hidden in our palms when we hold each other's forks. I think they mean all scars that feed us. Even love, even red tears can be a weapon or a prayer if you don't let the water free. Thank you. Um, so I've been writing a lot about family and I've been writing a lot around um, just like what does it mean to grow up as a black queer person in the South? And so um, that's where like that poem came out of and I've been writing a lot of different poems. So um, I'm excited to be sharing a lot of new work with you all. So um, hope you enjoy. This poem is called Y'all. Y'all. There were never any neighbor boys gnawing at our summer sweat sickles. No gym winks, no crush chafing, no coming age where we match the dogwoods. We hung up like girls perned, pearled in pain of windows, dreaming about lungs fat as pokemon drunk livers, cannon towards the sun, drowned in black velvet clouds. The weather girls in fall is how do we sing to the blast mascots, the murder men in uniforms in South Pole, the slick boys. If we could die for Dick or Devin or Daquan or Devante, we can cut our mouths into tulips or terriers, leashed by our hunger and touch. Master Maws would look down on us legendary. Urban legend like a God fearing a black man like a black mother letting the outside roam her house, like a cousin's new nut buck timberlands kissing the mud's face and still coming out blood fresh. Virginia is a special country, a seasonless neverland where the tire tar is a faggot. The skid skunk skid sinking in the snow is a faggot. The boy who meals in the art room alone during recess is a faggot. The herky at the talent show is a faggot. The brine blood making out with our fists. The girl's coogee jacket, track pants. The boy's gum pink razor. The juice of, jo of joy is a faggot. My niggas twirling in prisms is not how we found our way out, leasing our bodies to cinema. Back home, in the basements, in the cathedrals, in the kitchen, at the spades table, at the food lion, at the barber shop, we don't use wh that word. Queer, we say, ain't Miles, Ben's wrist, or didn't Rachel come home without her prom date, still talking that girl up about a sleepover, stirs the sweet tea. The South, my South, is a country full of black speech symbols, a symphony of silences sons sprint from, daughters sing to. I am not saying there was no one like us, what I'm saying is we did, didn't know where to shout, to twerk, to leap our bodies, limbs. Sometimes you have to run away to love your country back, to know how to look your family in the face with skunk in mouth, razor on belt, tar as mascara and defile dreams. We wife nations, 
Sovereign sisters, moon mothers, faggot forgotten. We knew, knew, knew nations. Ooh, yeah. So I've been writing, um, sorry, one second. I need water to get through this. Um, so I've been writing a lot about Virginia. I, I'm from Virginia. Shout out to all the people watching who are from Virginia. Um, I'm from Virginia, from Southern Virginia, and I grew up in a very black um, city of Hampton, Virginia. And um, there's just a lot of complexities around like what does it mean to be queer and black and like in, from a Christian household. And I think that um, um, it's interesting to see a lot of like coming of age um, movies and different like um books and how a lot of it is about desire and i think that desire is very interesting or tricky when you are black and you're battling a lot of things um and so i'm just i just think that that's where that poem came out of um so i feel like this like this word faggot is used a lot has been used a lot towards me and i'm always interested at like debunking its myth and also um trying to I guess like find power against that word um and so I wrote this poem um yeah I'm just gonna get right into it this poem is called the low down nigga calls my glow a faggot he think he a sharpshooter darting at me with all this teethless talk but I think the way he comes out at night a base jaw ajar waiting for slobber. Pants at his ankles. His body molts when I ain't one of his quiet toys. When I bend just inside the grasp of his frame. There ain't no surprise why he don't pull out his knot and stretch me over his gizzard mouth. Low down niggas love to call me out my name. Forget they used to chase me round the block. Hunt me down in their bedrooms. He says groan like he knows what that is. He licked the static off my shine last week. Head in high praise as my nectar dribbled down his throat. I can still smell my dew on his burlap, on his hardwood floors, on his burlap altar, on his blasphemous mouth. He claimed to know me better than my shadow does. I made a son from my shade, and this nigga ain't never been my daddy. He ain't never been the perspiration on Jesus' brow. A nigga puts his mouth on your spout and think he becomes what you prayed for. Forgets I defy gravity. Forgets I push the air when I slide in the room. Forgets I love to tell God what he didn't do right the first time. I never swallow to live. I dutty wine with the moon and suns shower me in golden orchards when their bones are stiff and ripe. You wish you could annihilate me, split me down the arc of my spine, but I the fetish boys try to wash off their third eye. I make them flaming flamingo, scorch banshee, howling martini, a bursting driftwood, throat deep like mine. I am that nigga with no hunger. That bitch who lives past dusk and dirt. Thank you. Woo. I love a good clapback poem, not gonna lie, not gonna lie. Um, I think there's something, I think that as a person who has been bullied and been, I guess, called every single name in the book, I think that there's something, um, vengeful about joy and I think that like finding joy I think that poem came out of a place of also like finding joy within myself and knowing that like I'm not the problem that like they were the problem and like that their aggression or this use of the word faggot is is their own um dealing with their own insecurity and their own um I guess like fear of um a life without like these constraints and I think that that's what queerness is um and so, yeah, I really am, I really, I really love a clapback poem. I feel like that's such a, you know, shout out to those, to those niggas who helped that poem, inspired that poem. I drink a lot of water, y'all, because it takes a lot of breath control. 
to get through these poems. But we getting through this. We getting through this. Um, hope y'all still. We hope, hope y'all are still with me. Um, so as you heard me talk about a little bit before, I'm obsessed um, with coming of age movies, coming of age novels, coming of age stories. Um, I just think there's something so. Um, um, I just always have such, um, I guess, like, love, and I guess it makes me, oh, nostalgia, I think that's the word I was looking for, nostalgia around, um, that time period, because I feel like a lot of, um, my coming of age was dealt with battling, I mean, like, anti-blackness and queer phobia, and I think that I didn't get to experience a, um, a similar childhood that most people, or these depictions, um, I guess depict and so I'm always interested in like just looking at them and like um either like complicating them or just looking back at them so I'm gonna read a couple of I did these um series of poems after coming of age um movies and I think I'm gonna write some more but I just have two um for now so um I'm gonna start with those so this is coming of age American Beauty 1999 All the girls say they are women, woven like terry cloth, straddling groans, groins to watch sternum's gargle moans. All the men never stop singing because by the beetles, crack crossed, mouth great gaped, confusing sap for home. Even I, caught in the snare traps of Calvin Klein spandex, lap up sweat. Delighted blood was tantalized by sculpture. Storytelling, an American standard definition, rose gardens, tragedy, no blacks faded in. Copper girls like me don't get a character arc. Some skulls flatter mid dialogue. That's the mirage of the screenplay. Imitation meat, men appearing as if they will hold themselves accountable. Um, and this is coming of age, The Virgin Suicides, 2000. Of course, it's the boy's decision to cut the silk strings webbed to his cleats. I forgot who the fabric belonged to. He'll fracture his jaw to whisper. Lawnmower precision, coached by fathers with as many ex-wives as lawyers. Teen girls obsessed with pink, must adore dying for the ba bad boy band mullet, I guess. And only suburban moms can covet God with no perspective of their childhood, of the man she leaked over on top of that allowed four girls and a father to happen. Apparently, depression finds women while football field grazing and jock strap juice and glass shattered collarbones. It's nobody's fault, men who narrate girls to travesty will say, while masturbating into yearbooks during their funeral calls. Girls just dive towards the grave, hatchet buried in their wings as accessory. Oh, how romantic. Cool, 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 cool. Um, let's see what I got here. So... I'm really interested in like different forms and I know this is gonna be like a little hard to I guess like talk about because you all can't see what I am reading but um I made this poem I don't know if you can see this I feel like this is terrible but I just wanted to give you a little preview but um I want I am really interested in um forms and like trying to like Think about how, like, what are the forms that are in our everyday life? Um, and also what are the forms that, like, are, like, inherently Black? Um, so I wrote this poem about, um, gender. And I, um, was really interested in just how, um, different forms kind of, like, repeat. And, um, like, um, I think this is, like, I guess you would call this, this poem structure that I made is kind of called like X, Y, X, X is basically based off of the, um, gender, um, chromosome. So, um, 
yeah, I'm just gonna, I feel like I, I really hate explaining my poems because I really just like to read them. But, you know, we gotta add a little banter in here, you know, we gotta add a little context. Um, in one second, I'm just pulling up the second part of the poem. I forgot to print that part out, but I can pull it up right here. I hope y'all's day is going well. I feel like this is going to be a little delayed because I know this is like pre-recorded. But I hope y'all still with me. I hope y'all still rocking with me. And I hope y'all having a cute ass day. Um, I feel like in these times, like I'm I'm recording this like literally the two, two days after um, the incident in Kenosha. Um, and I just think that this summer has been extremely um, taxing. And I feel like um, I've just been, I haven't even been writing that much. But I think that for me, moments like this where I can just like, kind of just like not really escape, but kind of um, be in community or be in conversation with other people, um, even though y'all are going to be seeing this delayed. Um, I think that this is... Um, I just really enjoy just like speaking out and be able to like um get some of those feelings out because I feel like it's such a difficult time um and I'm really grateful that this is being put together um and so I'm just going to continue to read my black ass poems <laughs> and I hope y'all enjoy them um, so um I'm I have like a little computer over here, so I'm still um, attentive. I'm just gonna be reading the second part because it's like a two part poem. So I'm gonna read the first part. Um, like I have these papers down here. I don't know if y'all can see them, but um, I wanted to do all new work for y'all. That's why most of the stuff isn't memorized. So um, I'm gonna read from here and then read the second part off my computer. But hope y'all enjoy. This poem is called X Y X X. Everyone wants a chunk of flower flesh on their front lawn. Seasoned I walk and niggas here rioting. I just want to party when I switch. I am a man, same suede black as their do-rags. People ask me, boy, and answer with fist. My friends cry, kill mo, prying the dirt from children's buckled teeth again. I am used to metaphor and shame. It never lingers. Some sisters call me kin because I'm trash and I know it. We dissect Adam's rib because holding my girl with my dick in my palm means safety. Mean school children get silent. Mean church girls playing on pavements with my joy. Uncles at my funeral gathering will tell you I'm a product of my own hood. I offend those who don't know biology like I do. Cook out mouth and grateful bartering. God gave us language for devil, but did not bother translating the sin. My black ass needed a beating glutton for blood that saves relentlessly. I got to be gun hole sweet to sit at our table unbothered. Everyone wants me to kill my demons because my healing is so, so important. I soldier here for God and still think about sobbing on Sunday. Still study the shunning, hand me a goblet of my own testicles and ask me if my mom made me this soft. Ask me why I haven't learned to stand outside too long in my own skin and I will tell you about flowers still souring on my front driveway when it rains looking like mirrors. I still don't know their name. This is XX. Everyone wants a chunk of fag flesh on their front lawn. Sacrificial I walk and sissies here rotting. I just want to pass when I switch. I am a bruise, same suede black as their acrylics. People ask me, girl, and I answer with fatigue. My ancestor cry, kill me, prying the dirt from corpses buckled teeth estranged. 
I'm used to mania and shame. It never leaves. Some sisters call me misogynistic because I am transgender and I know it. We dissect Adam's apples because holding my titties with my dick in my Bible means anarchy, means school children get sliced, means church girls painting on pavements with my jugular. Uncles at my funeral gathering will tell you I'm a conductor of my own death. I offend those who don't know God like I do. Cook out mouth and graceless bartering. God gave us language for angel, but did not bother translating the pronouns. My black ass needed a father glutton for blood that loves relentlessly. I got to be glory, whole sweet to sit at our table breathing. Everyone wants me to kill myself because my healing is so, so ugly. I squatter here for God and still think about suicide on Sunday. Study the celebration. Hand me a goblet of my own pussy and ask me if my mom made me this. Ask me why I haven't learned to sit outside too long in my own shit and I will tell you about sisters and still souring on my front sewer when it rains, looking like mulch. I still don't know their sound. It's always a hard one to read. I'm gonna take a deep breath in. Now, in and out. Okay. I always like to do like a deep breath in the middle of my sets or in the middle of a really, or after a really, really um, dense poem because I think that as much as I'm going through this, I also know that this is a journey that we're all going on. And I know this, obviously these poems are a little bit more personal to me because I wrote them and they're about stories that I have written. Um, and so I always like to just like, I think that breath is really important, right? Like we need to remember, remind ourselves that like we need to take the the deep breaths that we need throughout our day. So um, I'm always just like a proponent of like doing deep breaths. So you'll probably see me do it um, before, another one before the end of the the end of the set. Um, I have about I want to say about like. I don't know, I have like five to seven more poems, but I think we're about like a halfway point. Um, thank y'all for rocking with me. Um, I'm gonna take some more water. Um, so. I am obsessed with my family. <laughs> um, and that's what you'll, you'll see a lot of my family pop up in a lot of different poems. And, um, I've been writing this manuscript I'm writing two manuscripts, but I finished one manuscript called uh, We Be God, and um, that poem is a part of that manuscript, and um, I've just been really obsessing over just, like, how, like, the God in us as, like, Black people and also the God in um, each other and, and community and what does it mean to, so I'm not really a religious person, but I do believe in, in Godness and, like, that God is in people. Um, and I think that I've just been thinking about what are the different ways that, like, uh, we embody that, that is not so, so more so connected to like church in a sense but like the church in us in, be in between each other um as black people and as like family networks and so that's something that that manuscript explores um and so the manuscript after that that i'm currently writing and um um is called um well actually i don't want to say the name yet because i feel like it might change so i don't want to jinx it but i'm writing a, a current a full-length manuscript and i'm kind of like dialing more into those like family dynamics i think that the chapter kind of like gives it a breath of it but i think that i'm more so interested in di diving into like the particulars and in these um in these manuscripts you'll see a lot of four poems um so these next two poems are written for my twin and um i've just been exploring like Four, poem, four poems extensively and thinking about how, um, how, um, 
Like, what does it mean to, like, write a poem for someone and have other people witness that? Because I think that, like, in earnest, these poems are written for these one pre these one person and not really for anybody else. And I always am interested in, like, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean to have, like, a space where it's, like, for that one person, but also something that is going to be read and, like, interpreted by different people. So, um, this poem is written for my twin. These next two poems are. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm just gonna get right into it. The difference between family, blood, and kin for twin. After dinner, Uncle balls his fingernails into his palms and tells me if I want to be a man, I can. This time. I don't flinch like Miles at 10, or twin at 13, or us at 18, 20. I born sports bras beneath velvet dresses to battle my chosen kin's torturer for years. I've never understood clearer than now why Ashley, crazy cousin, doesn't come home for Christmas. Freedom is a sweet sword seeking penance or a parent. It's human to weigh sin in the sun, think size of violence matters, but it's direction that dictates the impact. The smallest needle can drown a throat inside out. Think of blood secrets, how they've uprooted trees, tyrants. We've been here before. Mom pretending uncle's sanctuary, saying we lie down for drama. Dad congealing concern on his chin. Their good grammar gone. Focus on the white women who dine, whine. The middle rich laboring our wounds, niggers. Her mother's family fiction fractured. Family forgets itself medals, forces grief into nuclear wings, then weapons quickly. Spraying our sky with charge of the truth without apology. I say bullied, branded, brother, broken, not boy. And family says you want to be negative, an inverted root, burn the bridge and house, now we turn to God. They'll see me again in my grave, like in the womb, never swimming away from my first breath. I never wanted to be men in this family. Broken knuckles, drinking poison for escape. God get, get made me a twin cause I needed someone to save me from his children. I had to learn love, crying, Giving up my girlhood isn't the same as respect. I lose family and gain a war. I lose blood and learn some lessons aren't worth treaties. I lose kin and find more branches governed by no one but us. A lot of these poems are the first time I've read them through, so sometimes I'll be getting to the end and I'll be like, Woo! Uh, that was a that was a lie. That was a lie. But it's okay, you know, those are these poems are for. <laughs> um I think that like the the one thing I always say is that like it's important or one thing that when I was in Slam, one thing we talked about is that like you get up and do these poems that are super, super personal. But, like, I think that the um, important part is that, like, you read it and you're still surviving after it, right? Like, these, like, some of, like, every poem isn't, you know, like, so, like, some of the clapback poems, some poems aren't, like, um, I guess, like, um, some poems don't, like, build you back up at the end. And I think that the thing that always builds me back up is that I'm still standing and that I'm still being able to, like, read it and stay there. Um, so, I'm, I think that's so important. Um... And so I'm just going to read, I'm going to read this other poem, poem for my twin. And it's actually called Twin. And um, this is a new poem. Um, it's in the same, like, um, XY, um, XX, um, like, um, position. So um, this poem is called Twin. Um, this is for Twin. XY. Bitch, you are improper to love. You are impossible to gun without the world watching me turn to genocide. I had a little 
moment there. <laughs> I'm gonna start over because I was like almost choking on water. Um, so X Y. Bitch, you are improper to love. You are impossible to gun without the world watching me turn to genocide. I'd be a criminal for life sentences. Say less if they want me to prove it. This nation knows not what it birthed. Beasts have human etymologies. Even evil sounds treasonous to our tread. They've only seen vibrations of hell. Only seen victims as ghosts. Twins can be omniscient like light. My hands travel area codes, speak to tongues. We be God cause we worship intravenously. Once I dreamt you tombed and decided enough trying to breathe, kneeling to convince humans to human, mothers to mother, a womb warrior, a worst sister separated. Even our family don't want us talking about childhood loss, about our country lessons. Even our brother don't want us at war without him. Fear faces every photo of us. At Granny's house, we say we ratchet so people can hold the weight of our weapons preamble. Oh say, can you see the warning? The wishing for this end to be psychology? What if therapists apologized? What if healing could horizon home? I give giving up. I give speeches to the sky. There'll be no here left after your heaven. What's to save this world would be? Whew. That's another one. Y'all still with me? Y'all still with me? Okay, I have about four-ish more poems, probably three, um, because I can feel... Like, I just, you know how, like, you just feel like you just done said all you need to say? I feel like I'm coming up on that. Um, I kind of just want people to, like, sit with some of these. And I feel like sometimes it just feels like an overload. But I hope y'all have been enjoying this set. I just want to, like, take a moment to say, like, um, again, thank you so much to Tufts University Social Collective um, for putting this event together. Um, I think that it's so important uh, to be um, doing work like this at this moment. Um, and just to have a little shout out, I know that um, there, um, Denzel Orduro, I hope I said your name right, um, is um, designing a t-shirt that is going to be being sold to raise money for the Tufts Africana Center. So if you all can um, make sure y'all go to buy that shirt, all the proceeds will go to that center. Um, as you all know, a lot of like students and a lot of like um, are being forced to go back to school, um, under these, the, these conditions, and a lot of these, um, and a lot of, like, places are trying to, like, figure out funding, and I think it's important that we invest in Black students really importantly right now, and make sure that they have all they need, and I think that it's, it's really great that they're, um, uh, putting this fundraiser on, um, and so, yeah, um, I got about, like, I'm gonna do, like, two-ish more poems, uh, or, I'm gonna do three more poems. So, um, this poem, um, I, I, t I was laughing because I was thinking about clapback poems. So this is a clapback poem. Um, and I feel like this is my, like, clapback poem that I'm really, like, holding on to. I think that it's so, uh, um, I think a lot of people are expecting black people to not, or to, um, I guess, like, find a respectful way of to respond to this moment of like intense anti-blackness and um and like police brutality um think of the many many um people who have been murdered this summer alone um and been shot at been harmed uh this summer alone and I think that is such um such a rich um way of thinking to think that we're just supposed to be like oh yeah like let's just continue on like let's, this is just like every day and i just think that like i just like i'm like where like where do y'all think that this rage is gonna go like this like we are angry we are upset and i think rightfully so right i think that um and i think that for me i like put it in my work i put it in like the organizing that i do um and i also put it in my poems and i think that like i also think that people will, like when i speak about certain things you can feel the intensity and the rage and i think that um, 
it comes from a place of just being tired, right? I think people focus on the anger, but not think about the exhaustion. Like, um, I think that a lot of us are just like so tired of holding all this grief, all this constant struggle that like many people don't ever have to experience. And I think that it's wildly unfair that black people um, still even now after months of oppression um, and like months of like watching people like people like us uh, get murdered. Um, it just can't be business as usual. Um, right. And so this poem was just like, um, just my angry poem to all that. Sonnet with all the words my mama didn't teach me. Oh, how ungrateful of us medium rare niggas to talk with our bodies full while another beast barters unclotted kin blood. While the most ordi ordinary of us get taffied accordion gummied cracked obtuse into bone debris. Yet we let whiteness keep its sockles, sockets concealed. What niggers of us to let enamel stay linen clean, stay leech to our raw areolas, only to snarl at how savory our licorice be. Pink flesh breaches their mother's pussy to bask in Benjamin's scraped from my bloodline and limp tongues don't got cooth enough to bedazzle their bitches. What ca Caucasians of them to spit without diamond fronts to not listerine their dusty tantrums. We cannot fashion pacifism anymore. We've earned a Louis Vuitton riot. Clorox tears reeking of seas sorrow won't distill our hands no more. Centuries of masochists hibernated in the gashes of our blackest scabs and dared to call us thieves. A child wants a war with no weapons. We know how to cock more than just our middle fingers when loaded. Ooh. I'm drinking water. I feel like such an auntie or a grandma every time I'll be like, whoo. Y'all, I'm from the South, so I'm really in. Like, I be acting like an uh, auntie all the time. be with my deep sighs and stuff. But, I mean, um, I just get... It's, like, hard to sometimes, like, read poems when you're, like... You're, like, adrenaline is, like, going. And also that, like, you're, like... I'm, I'm like, sitting down right now. So it's hard sometimes to, like, push the breath up. Um, but I feel like... Um, yeah, like, I just think that I'm just, I'm, I feel like I'm really angry at most of the things that have happened. And I think that sorrow, I think that um, sorrow comes first. And I think that the anger is now starting to come first. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I think I'm trying to figure out how to be, like, productive about it. Um, and I think that some, like, I feel like actually, like, just to talk back to that point, I don't think that it has to be productive. Like, I think that you can like it's okay to just like feel your emotions and sit in there and be there and i think that that's important um i think that i've always tried to like i think that as a black person i've tried to like speak to that and like remind myself that it's okay to just like um sit in your emotions right now um especially in like within trauma like when you're in a traumatic period um and so yeah um just two more poems left um i feel like my mouth is like doing that thing so i hope i'm still like saying words in there coming through um i feel like um if you ever like seen like spoken word like a lot of people have like do like little like jaw exercises to get the poem out so um yeah actually i think i feel like let me see i think i'm just gonna do one more poem actually i think that i just want to end on this one because i think that so I wrote this poem in the middle of the pandemic and I think that I want, I'm like, my body's like feeling like ending here um, is a good point because I think it's everything I want to say. And I think that this is a poem that I really have been gravitating towards um, of late because I just, I need some ounce of hope. And I think that this poem gave me hope that I didn't even know was in my body. So um, and I think that it's important to hold on to. So. Thank you all so much for tuning in, for sitting through this this set. Um, I'm going to take some more water before I read this last poem. Um, okay. 
This poem is called Contradictions. Contradictions. And maybe at the gates I need no one by me. And maybe everyone is no one mothering my palms into wings. Maybe I don't need wings to remember myself loved. Or maybe I need angel ancestors or anchor ankles to remember I lift when I hear my brother's accent in my mouth. Maybe every love has left a licorice lesion shaped like a door or every lover has left a lost lesson shaped like a mirror. Maybe gates are a door and the door is a captain and the captain is a weapon and the weapon is God and maybe not, and maybe yes. Maybe weapons are loyal, meaning blood bound, meaning subjective servant, meaning tyrants teetering. Maybe words betray the blood and what the brain thinks it knows. And maybe cells are the brain engine, the heart breath. Betrayal may be the anatomy of death or synonym for set free. Maybe mother friends, Femme sisters, day one niggas know how men have been. So they named their children after poisons, marigold, glory, cathedrals. Maybe that's why we call our friends bitches, shooters, hitters, any, anything after what fraught families have hidden under their tongues, under their mattresses. And maybe we're never women, but the father, Maybe mother is to be a flock of fathers who know they were the one before beginning, before his boys, Genesis. And maybe being a man means remembering for a lifetime that you've been mothered. Maybe, 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 and maybe we've been something better than now. Maybe we've been better than now, but maybe we are wings. Maybe we've always been a captain, bloodbound doors, shaped like gates, and maybe we are loyal weapons, mirroring no one. Whew. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all for tuning in. Um, I hope you, let's take a deep breath. I feel like it's important to take a deep breath at the end of this. So I'm gonna take a deep breath for me and go in and then out. And one more. Wow. Um, thank you so much for having me again. I appreciate you all for tuning in. Um, you all can check me out on Instagram at golden them underscore and on Twitter at golden them. Um, I don't really have any more plugs. <laughs> I feel like it's a little, um, a little, I don't know, on the contrary, but thank you all so much for tuning in and I hope you all, um, stay safe. Thank you so much.